the world is currently staring at a number of conflicts from Syria to Libya as extremists battle established orders to propagate their ideologies. The conflicts leaving a tall order on women and girls killing their educational dreams. Kenya is now stepping in to speak with such women and girls who have remained silent voices for long. Of course, as a country, we have made a number of strides in addressing some of these challenges. We have very specific policy and legal framework to guide us. We have a Children's Act, we have a Basic Education Act that requires that all children in Kenya must go to school, including refugee children. This means that we are mandated as government to provide formal <clears throat> primary and secondary education to children, particularly even in refugee camps and surrounding areas. Foreign Affairs Cabinet Secretary Monica Juma urging the continent to come to the rescue of such vulnerable groups. It is most likely, it was Lisa, that when there is a crisis and even parents or societies have to choose, the first victims will be the girls who will be pulled out of school because they are the ones who are going to be fetching the water that is further and further every day because of drought. They are the ones who get off so that their brothers can go to school. Speaking at the Conference on Education of Girls and Women in Conflict and Post-Conflict Situations in Africa, Juma said education remains the best option to rescue their women and girls and have them make positive contributions to the continent's prosperity. We realize that on the average, the women have very little power. We tend to have the lower esteem. We tend to be the ones with little economic empowerment. We tend to be the ones who are voiceless even in decisions that intimately affect our own lives. To make gender equality a reality, all women and girls around the world must have equal access to quality education and learning opportunities. This is why Canada has been working hard to build global momentum around education, galvanizing support to make sure that girls and women in even the most challenging circumstances get the kind of gender responsive quality education they need. Participants at the forum cited funding, innovation, coordination as some of the many stumbling blocks to education of women and girls in conflict zones. Girls and women in education in normal circumstances already are in an uneven footing. Now the shift focuses now on women and girls' education in conflict-prone areas. Alan Aukoripoti for Channel 1 News in Nairobi.